One of the benefits, and perhaps the greatest benefit for a flight yoke with a sound mechanical design is subtlety of control. The Honeycomb Alpha yoke has a smooth lock to lock action with no mechanical notching in the centre and this allows small adjustments rapidly made without the feeling of an invisible hand interfering. This is just as important and arguably more important than precision. This device only delivers 8-bit data so it isn't all that precise but that smooth mechanical action more than makes up for that in giving us finesse in controlling the aircraft. So for making short or tight approaches under maybe gusty conditions it's important to have that finesse but it's something we need across the board really for a more authentic experience of flight. Making small adjustments around the centre position is a vital part of any manoeuvring because we need to hold back pressure in turns and usually we need to hold some outside aileron to counter the aircraft's tendency to overbank as well. Again this is really hard to do properly if we're fighting a, a big notch in the centre or two separate notches if we're trying to hold back pressure and let's say outside aileron at the same time. It's a great discipline to practice flying precisely which perhaps I'm not achieving particularly well here but by balancing rudder and aileron inputs and by also maintaining altitude in the turns. We're not very well served for coordinating the rudder in the sim because we don't have any physical feedback. In real life we'd feel the aircraft out of balance in a turn and hence the need to compensate. But in the sim we have to rely on watching a gauge, um, usually the balance ball. And there's another problem in prepared and FSX which is that the balance ball doesn't really behave all that realistically. But it is what it is and we can make some effort to fly coordinated flight. In this aircraft by the way we can use that whisky compass at the top of the dash as a balance indicator and uh, it's a little bit more convenient because it's pretty much within our line of sight. So if that compass indicator is tilted either way the end that's tilted up tells us which rudder pedal we need to be stepping on. And this will likely work in other aircraft as well. It certainly works in the A2A Piper Cub. Now in some of these approaches you'll see me flying deliberately out of balance to lose some height and again we benefit here from the smoothness in this honeycomb yoke. Now in this aircraft when we're crossing the controls we really need to hold some assertive forward pressure on the yoke to avoid the speed dropping too precipitously and what we find with the honeycomb yoke is we can get very subtle control over this. Now a lot of people have commented on the stiffness the elevator springs in this yoke. I find this helpful because it allows vigorous operation of the yoke without hitting the stops too hard. We do run out of pitch travel quickly it's true but it's worth noting without that mechanical disruption in the centre we do find pretty much all of that travel is usable travel which is something you can't say for the cheaper yokes. Now just another word on the spring action. In practice we don't really find that discrepancy between the pitch and roll springs to be much of a problem the only comment I would make is that roll resistance doesn't feel progressive at all so that can I guess lead to a little bit of sloppiness but it's not a big deal. So there it is that's a little bit more on the honeycomb yoke. All of this in prepared of course so we'll keep flying it for now and maybe a next step will be to do some similar experiments in X-Plane. So watch this space. <laughs>